On reflection, the Millennium Championships were memorable in so many ways. The first African-American champion in the women's singles since Althea Gibson in the 1950s. And what a remarkable athlete Venus Williams is. Pete Sampras winning a 13th Grand Slam Championship. Can you believe the expertise required for that? The Woodies adding to their legend with a sixth title in eight years in their farewell appearance. And that was a fairy story in itself. And so was the appearance in the doubles final of the Williams sisters. Is there no stopping this remarkable American pair? And a fine new mixed doubles pair to win their first championship. But I think for most of us, the highlight of the fortnight was the trip down memory lane on the middle Saturday with the Parade of Champions. To mark the Millennium Championships, Wimbledon decided on a special celebration, a trip down memory lane, SW19 style. What better way to commemorate the Millennium than to pay tribute to those who've made Wimbledon unique, the past champions. Early arrivals were treated to a tour of the club's latest addition. The Millennium Building, inaugurated at these championships, caters for players, the media and the members. There are new restaurants, writing rooms for the press, TV interview rooms, plus changing and fitness areas. All first-class facilities. The past champions seem very impressed, and perhaps just a little envious too. Welcome to the middle Saturday of this 114th championship meeting, which, as you are about to see, is a very special one. As part of our Millennium celebrations, we've invited back to Wimbledon all surviving singles champions, plus those players who have appeared in two or more singles finals, and all those champions in doubles and mixed who have won here at least four times. Now, in view of the uncertain weather, you will understand that we may have to abort the ceremony at any moment, and accordingly, we have a slightly modified program, but First comes first, we're really here to play tennis, and that is what you'll be seeing later. Well, no fewer than 65 of our champions are here today, and in a moment, you'll be meeting them all. There is for each one of them an individually engraved Waterford crystal plate, and Her Royal Highness, the Duchess of Gloucester, the honorary president of the Lawn Tennis Association, will present a token plate, the one you see there on the table, to each as they come forward. So, as they enter this famous stage, where over the years they've thrilled us with their skills and left us with so many happy memories, please give them a fitting Wimbledon welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, the champions.
Thank you, man. Now, ladies and gentlemen. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the presentation party accompanying the Duchess of Gloucester are the All England Club Chairman, Mr. Tim Phillips, the LTA President, Mr. Malcolm Gracie, and the club's Chief Executive, Mr. Christopher Gorringe. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we shall present, be presenting first our doubles champions, then our singles finalists, and finally our singles champions. Certainly the most charismatic character of his generation. The most charismatic character of his generation. Last year he performed heroically in Paris to add the missing link to his growing list of Grand Slam titles. His present total is six and he became only the fifth man to win them all. Still writing new pages in the game's history after his Houdini act yesterday, yes, it is, of course, Andre Agassi. From Adelaide, South Australia, this former Aussie Rules footballer with Frank Sedgman won the Grand Slam of doubles in 1951. Still the only men's pair ever to do so. Please welcome the man they call Macca, Ken McGregor. Born in Australia, he emigrated to South Africa in the 60s and helped them win the Davis Cup in 1974. Here at Wimbledon, he won the men's doubles five times with two different partners and the mixed doubles twice. Please welcome Bob Hewitt. From Queensland, Australia, he took the men's doubles once and the mixed four times, all of them with the great Margaret Court, with whom he won a Grand Slam of mixed in 1963. Yes, it's Ken Fletcher. Now, a left-hander from Sydney who won the doubles titles at all the Grand Slams and the singles in France. He triumphed here five times in men's doubles and once in mixed and was also a singles finalist. A proud Aussie Davis Cup player, he was the coach of last year's Australian winning team. Yes, it's Tony Roach.
This diminutive American, our first lady champion today, won the doubles five times and twice won the mixed in the early 70s. She hails from sunny Sausalito in California. So a warm Wimbledon welcome, please, for Rosie Casals. Yet another Aussie, a left-handed mixed doubles expert, as Billie Jean King shrewdly realized. Together they won four times here, and in 1967, with Billie Jean and Leslie Turner, Davo put together an individual Grand Slam in mixed. It is, of course, Owen Davidson. Two-handed on both sides, this subtle South African used a bewildering blend of power and touch to earn three men's and two mixed doubles titles here at Wimbledon, plus Davis Cup success in 74. Remember that white cap? It belonged to Froome McMillan. Now an American giant, who, with John McEnroe, won four titles here, three in America, plus seven consecutive Masters titles. Also, this dynamic duo won 14 of their 15 Davis Cup doubles matches, a world record. Yes, it's Peter Fleming. From Baltimore, Maryland, and born appropriately on the 4th of July, she's the proud possessor of five doubles titles, all with Martina Navratilova. Together, they won a doubles Grand Slam in 1983, and altogether, Pam won 22 titles at the majors, one of them in mixed. Yes, it's Pam Shriver. This Czech lady, whose mother Vera was a singles finalist here in 1962, has won four women's doubles titles at Wimbledon and three in mixed, two of those with her brother. A warm welcome, please, for Helena Sukova. From Minsk in Belarus, she's delighted us with her smile, her great one-liners, and of course her supreme double skill. Five times in the 90s, she carried off our title, and altogether, she captured 20 Grand Slam crowns. Yes, it's the Minx from Minsk, Natasha Zvereva. Born in Puerto Rico, she won the doubles here four times among a haul of 17 Grand Slam doubles successes and twice won Olympic gold medals for America with namesake Mary Jo. She is, of course, Gigi Fernandez. Now to meet our singles finalists in chronological order. First, one of only two representatives of the pre-war game here today. This great gentleman reached the final in 1932 and 38. With Fred Perry, he was also the mainstay of Britain's four Davis Cup wins in the 30s, and later this year, he will be celebrating his 94th birthday. So a special welcome, please, for Bunny Austin.
time now to meet the great Dane, who twice reached our singles final here unseeded, a feat that has never been repeated. A Danish Davis Cup player and captain, he's also been a Grand Prix supervisor. Please welcome Kurt Nielsen. With 18 Grand Slam successes over a span of 20 years, Australia's little master has enjoyed worldwide respect as one of the game's most enduring champions. Four times a singles finalist here, he twice won the doubles and still competes in our seniors event. Known affectionately as Muscles, it's Ken Rosewall. Now a powerful Californian lady with a total of 21 Grand Slam singles and doubles titles to her name, who at Wimbledon was twice a singles finalist, four times a doubles champion and the winner of three mixed titles. Yes, it's Darlene Hart. Australia's fiery Fred, a multiple men's doubles and mixed champion at Wimbledon, won the French and US singles titles. But here he was pipped at the post in three consecutive finals. What a fate to suffer. But he still comes back for more punishment each year in the seniors. Yes, it's fiery Fred Stolly. Was there ever a more fluent striker of a tennis ball than this elegant Czech-born lady? A right-hander who won the Australian, French and US singles titles, but was twice thwarted in finals here. Please welcome Hannah Mandlikova. Three times already, this Croatian left-hander with the booming serve and the delightful sense of humour has been a singles finalist here. And who is to say that one day he won't fulfil his dream and become our champion? Then he'd have the last laugh. Yes, it's Goran Ivanisevic. Our most senior champion today is a distinguished American who first played on this court in 1927. Can you believe that? When he was just 15 years old. Four years later, he returned to win the championship title. Still sprightly at 88 years, please welcome the Peter Pan of tennis, Sidney Wood. of a remarkable line of post-war American ladies who totally dominated the world scene for a decade, she came from Dayton, Ohio. She grew up in Los Angeles, was four times the US champion, and won our title in 1946. She is, of course, Pauline Betts Addy. A doubles winner in 1947, this tall American with the cannonball serve returned one year later to hammer his way to success over Australia's John Bromwich, saving three match points in the process. Please welcome America's Bob Falkenberg.
with his rolling gait and his corncob pipe, you could have taken this athletic Californian for a sailor. And he had to weather four stormy five-set matches as he sailed to his title here in 1949. He was also a proud member of four successful U.S. Davis Cup teams. Yes, it's Ted Schroeder. He gave up smoking in 1950 and promptly won the French Open to become the American in Paris. Four weeks later, he triumphed here. It's amazing what you can do when you get really fit. Please welcome the ever elegant and still very fit, Budge Patty. In 1951, already the champion of Australia, this powerful American, born in New Jersey, came to Wimbledon and carried all before him to win a second Grand Slam title. I don't think he ever smoked. We'll ask him afterwards, but please welcome back Dick Savitt. This legendary Australian champion was the last of only three men to have won the singles, doubles and mixed titles at Wimbledon in the same year. This he did in 1952 and altogether won 22 Grand Slam titles as well as that 1951 doubles Grand Slam with Ken McGregor. Yes, of course, it's Frank Sedgman. From Philadelphia, this indefatigable American athlete was our singles champion in 1953, one year before he won his own national championship. And, always a winner with the ladies, he was a Wimbledon mixed doubles champion four years in a row. Please welcome Vic Satius. A left-hander born in Prague, he twice won the French Open, and then in 1954, in his third final here, and now aged 33, he at last became the champion. It was an emotional moment for all of us, and of course, for Yaroslav Drobny. From Cincinnati, Ohio, this, this great American athlete utterly dominated the tennis world in 1955, winning a second French title, as well as the Wimbledon and US titles that year, a feat surpassed by only two men. In winning the latter two, he didn't drop a single set. What a performance from Tony Trabert. Now a lady from Ohio, born in Akron, she was our ladies champion in 1956. She's one of only five men and women who have won the singles and doubles titles at all four of the Grand Slam championships. A warm welcome please for Shirley Fry, now Mrs. Fry Irvin. Our 1958 champion, another Australian superstar, also won the Australian and US titles that year, a Grand Slam triple achieved by only 10 other men before he joined the pro ranks. A warm Wimbledon welcome please for Ashley Cooper.
there once was a girl named Maria, and she was the first Brazilian ever to win a Grand Slam title. This elegant lady, beautifully dressed in Teddy Tinling's stunning creations, amassed 20 titles altogether, eight here at Wimbledon, three in singles, five in doubles. A warm welcome, please, for Maria Bueno. Born in Peru, they called him the chief. And for nine glorious months in 1958 and 59, before turning professional, he was the leader of America's winning Davis Cup team, the champion of Australia, and champion here at Wimbledon. It's Alex Olmedo. We remember this powerful left-hander with the mule-kicking serve as our singles champion in 1960 and a winner in doubles and mixed. But Australia remembers him best as an outstanding Davis Cup player and captain. Yes, it's Neil Fraser. Born in Devon, she arrived at Wimbledon for the 11th time in 1961, already the French and Australian champion. In an emotional all-British final, the first since 1914, she ended a 24-year British drought and lifted that famous trophy at last. Please welcome the lady I see every morning at breakfast, Angela Mortimer. His four Wimbledon titles alone, two as an amateur, two in the early years of open tennis, would have set this modest Australian left-hander apart. But his two Grand Slams in 1962 and 69, unique in tennis, stamp him as arguably the greatest of them all. Happily restored to full health, please welcome the Rockhampton Rocket, Rod Laver. Another remarkable Australian athlete who in 1970 won a singles Grand Slam. Seven years after putting together a Grand Slam in mixed with Ken Fletcher, a unique double. All these among her world record total of 62 titles at the four major championships, a number that surely will never be beaten. So a warm Wimbledon welcome please for Margaret Smith, now the Reverend Mrs. Court. He came from Blackbutt in Queensland, a country lad with the physique of an ox and hungry for success voraciously devouring Grand Slam titles in the 60s, Mo amassed 12 in singles, a record he shares with Pete Sampras, among a total of 28, including doubles, another record. Yes, it's Roy Emerson. now to meet Wimbledon's most prolific champion, a remarkable lady who has done more to advance the cause of women's sport than anyone before or since. Her record tally of 20 titles here, six in singles, 10 in doubles, four in mixed, sets her apart. 
So did her battle of the sexes against Bobby Riggs in 1973. In her time, she's been player, stateswoman, innovator, and entrepreneur. And she's still Billie Jean King. the winner of one US and two French titles, he came to Wimbledon in 1966 and illuminated the centre court with his sunny Spanish smile and his supreme artistry. There was never a more gracious champion than Manuel Santana. With or without the famous moustache, you'd recognize this rugged Aussie for his uncompromising serve and volley game that won him three singles and six doubles titles here among a Grand Slam total of 26. It's, of course, John Newcomb. Originally a world table tennis star, she transferred her skills to the larger stage and made herself twice the French champion before coming here in 1969 to win the singles at last with two stunning victories over the world's numbers one and two. And for good measure, she took the mix that year as well. Please welcome Anne Jones. Was there ever a more charming champion than this talented Australian lady who won the singles titles twice, first in 71 and again in 1980, by which time she'd become Mrs. Roger Corley and a mother, only the fourth mother ever to win here. Yes, it's Yvonne Goulagon Corley. The epitome of the all-American boy, he won his own national title in 1971 and the following year triumphed here in a spectacular five-set final against Ilya Nastasi, who he would beat again dramatically in Bucharest to clinch the Davis Cup for America later that year. Please welcome Stan Smith. In 1973, already twice the winner in France and a finalist on grass at the US Open, this Czech-born right-hander enjoyed his greatest moment at Wimbledon when he beat Alexandra Metrovelli of Russia in the only final so far between two Eastern Europeans. Please welcome Jan Kodes. We all fell in love with Little Miss America when, in 1974, and aged just 19, she won the first of her three singles titles here. It was a mutual love affair that prospered over 12 magical years, during which spell she won 21 Grand Slam titles, 18 of them in singles. Yes, of course, Chris Evert.
Was there ever a better match player than the super Swede with the ice blood in his veins? The holder of a record six French titles and five consecutive titles here, another record. He's back on centre court today for the first time since 1981. Show him how much we miss him. It's Bjorn Borg. If you'd written a script for it, you couldn't have done better. At her 16th attempt, a British win at Centenary Wimbledon in front of the Queen in her Jubilee year. Who could ever forget that spontaneous outbreak of, for she's a jolly good fellow. And she was, and still is. It's Virginia Wade. She was the greatest fast court player of all time, who for 12 majestic years set new standards of fitness and application for other women to follow. Her achievements stretch far beyond the limits of her 19 titles here, a record nine of those in singles, because with 167 career singles titles, eight or 18 of them in the Grand Slams, she has a master total that will probably never be equaled. Ladies and gentlemen, Martina Navratilova. Now a man whose outrageous talent and equally outrageous behaviour made him the most compelling character of his or any other generation. He excelled in singles and doubles, winning 77 career titles of each. And here at Wimbledon he won three times in singles and five in doubles. The new US Davis Cup captain, he once said to an umpire, you cannot be serious. <laughs> But we are, and welcoming back to Centre Court, John McEnroe. Ever since that magical day in 1985, when, still only 17 and unseeded, he had walked off with the Wimbledon title. The youngest ever to do so, and the first from Germany. We thought we'd witnessed something special. We were right. With two more wins from six more finals, plus success in Australia and the United States, as well as an Olympic gold medal in doubles, he became one of the giants of the modern game. Please welcome Boris Becker.
Who will ever forget that emotional moment in 1987 when this athletic Australian, already a Davis Cup hero at home, won his first major title here with a superb display of attacking tennis against Ivan Lendl and then clambered over the heads of spectators to share the moment with family and friends. Yes, it's Pat Cash. This greatest of German athletes, known affectionately as Fraulein Forehand, was also the greatest Grand Slam performer of them all. For her 22 singles crowns included at least four wins at each of the four major championships, a feat no other man or woman has ever achieved. Also unique was her Golden Grand Slam in 1988, when she added the Olympic title to her four slam wins. A warm welcome, please, for our seven-time champion, Steffi Graf. If ever there was a man to disprove the theory that nice guys come last, it's this delightful servant and volley Swede whose six career Grand Slam single successes, two of them here, two in Australia, two in America, were achieved with a modesty and charm that endeared him to everyone. Please welcome Stefan Edberg. His two moments of triumph at Wimbledon were very special. The first, his singles victory over Boris Becker in 1991, gave him long overdue recognition at home. And the second, his double success here with John McEnroe in 1992, confirmed him as a great all-rounder, as did his Olympic gold medal in doubles. Please welcome Michael Stich. In 1994, with a devastating display of ground stroke power and control, this Spanish lady ended Martina Navratilova's quest for a tenth singles title and became the first from her country to win the women's singles. Please welcome Conchita Martinez. She needed a shoulder to cry on in 1993, when in the first of her three finals, she lost a seemingly unassailable lead and with it the chance to join the club of Grand Slam winners. Five years later, nearing the end of her distinguished career, she at last achieved her dream. We were all delighted and so of course was Jana Novotna. And finally, our reigning ladies champion is still at the start of what promises to be a spectacular career. The Olympic gold medalist in Atlanta, she began her collection of Grand Slam titles in America two years ago. This year's Australian win made it three in a row. And now that she's recovered from some niggling injuries, she could easily add a fourth here this year. Please wish her luck, our number two seed, Lindsay Dav Davenport.
Time now for the official photo call. It was then you realised what a galaxy of talent had been assembled. 70 years of Wimbledon achievement represented here. But you may have noticed a few omissions. Well, a few of our champions were still in action that day. But they all assembled later in the Royal Box to receive their recognition. Indivisible as a doubles pair and great friends off the court, the Woodies brought the art of doubles to new heights in the 90s, reaching a record six consecutive finals here, winning the first five. In Paris, three weeks ago, they captured their 58th title together to surpass the record they jointly held with Hewitt and Macmillan and Fleming and McEnroe. Yes, it's our top seeds this year who won again today, Todd Woodbridge and Mark Whitford. From sunny Spain, she has twice been a singles finalist and she won our ladies doubles title five years ago. Altogether, she holds 13 Grand Slam titles and is getting married shortly after Wimbledon. Our congratulations on that and on the win she's just had today. Our best wishes to Arancha Sanchez Vicario. Precociously talented, this Czech-born world number one from Switzerland has been setting records all her young life. With the doubles title here in 1996, she became, at 15, the youngest ever winner of a Grand Slam title. And today, with five singles and eight doubles already in the majors, she could become the most successful champion of all time. Yes, it's our 1997 champion and this year's top seed, Martina Hingis. What is there left to say about our reigning men's champion? who for six glorious years ended the season as the world's number one, a record. With six Wimbledon wins in the last seven years, he is indisputably the greatest grass court champion of this or any other generation. When Pistol Pete, aged 19, exploded on the scene as the youngest ever US champion in 1990, he was known as the world's greatest server. Now, as he chases a record 13th Grand Slam singles title, he's respected as the world's greatest all-court player and a true gentleman, still going strong despite the injury. Please welcome Pete Sampras. It was all rather fun, wasn't it? And although some of them don't look quite as young as they once did, they were all very moved by the occasion, as indeed were this year's champions. So let us leave you with these images of Wimbledon 2000.